Hello everyone and welcome to the anticipated part 2 to Dragon Ball Kagame chapter 2 and full chapter 3. I'm your host, Vro, and let's get into it. We left off with the arrival of several gods of destruction accompanied by their respective angels. There is however a bit of a twist. One of the god of destruction is Frieza. Whis confronts Frieza admitting he knew that Frieza wouldn't sit around doing nothing. To this, Frieza responds his appearance is but a taste of what is to come. He also explains how he became a god of destruction. Zuno informs commanders of the Frieza army about the arrival of new universes. Thus, they told Frieza, Frieza being Frieza, he didn't necessarily train or earn his god of destruction status. Instead, he killed the previous god of destruction for universe 18. Honestly, the way he's drawn is a treat in itself, but it's refreshing to see Frieza actually doing something. Not to mention this Frieza reminds me of the original series, but back to the review. Whis is seemingly unbothered by Frieza's explanation. In fact, Whis simply tells Frieza he doesn't know what he's doing, that there is no thought behind his actions. Then Frieza asks where Goku is. Really truly, I love to see another battle between the two. The intense energy is quite entertaining. That being said, Whis does say that he lost contact with Goku, that the Saiyan isn't losing the button Whis gave him, nor is Goku's presence detectable within Universe Zero. One of the Gods of Destruction's Nighters from Universe 17 responds saying that they welcomed him, as it should be, meaning Goku is now captured. The Grand Priest is surprised by this, wondering why Goku was taken. The Mother of Angels tells the Grand Priest not to be so ignorant. Next, we have an absolutely badass page of Goku. He is chained to the pillars that seems to emit from some sort of light. He cries out asking what the angels want from him. The Saiyan then apologizes to Whis. Switching back to the angels and god of destructions, the Grand Priest asks what the newly arrived god of destructions want. Makinak, the god of destruction from Universe 16, then reveals their goal to absolve the divine hierarchy. Perhaps to further initiate the Grand Priest, several objects are knocked down. One of the angels get nervous enough to call out for the Grand Priest, but he merely tells the angels to calm themselves down. During this, another god of destruction mocks the Grand Priest. This close-up shot really shows up amazing texture, I cannot get enough how good the art is. A god of destruction, Jormel from Universe 14, stands up to the Grand Priest saying, no more games, it's time to make things happen. The Grand Prix seemingly mocks him asking what exactly the God of Destruction plans to do. Then the Mother of Angels states a new war between deities on a multi-universal scale is about to begin. Not only this, but the Mother of Angels also say that everyone will have to pick a side, mortal or otherwise. This line hits hard, it delivers so coldly and dramatically, I genuinely enjoy all the dialogue in this chapter. Thankfully, the Grand Priest isn't without a plan. He freezes the angels and gods of destruction in space and time. It's clearly a lot of effort for him considering the nosebleed he gets. Angels gather around him concerned. He tells the angels not to worry, but this isn't over yet. Those frozen must be taken to Universe Zero and frozen in its turn. One of the angels, Kusk, asks the Grand Priest if this is a hazard to his health. Once more, despite his blood loss, the Grand Priest tries to notify Kusk's concerns. Whis then implores Kukutel for assistance. They must summon all the Supreme Kais along with Kabito, which will make 13. The Supreme Kais are then gathered with Kakutail, making sure the Supreme Kais will all succeed. Once more, the perspective changes to Universe 7 Planet Earth. Here, a picnic is happening with some rather noticeable faces. We see characters such as a grown-up Goten, Majin Buu, Chi-Chi, and Android 18. Chi-Chi herself is worried over Goku. Videl tries to assure Chi-Chi. Meanwhile, Gohan is fixing his tie preparing to meet the others. He remarks that the sky is beautiful, 
Gohan then asks if Goku has arrived yet. No one really answers, but Chi Chi's expression is enough to go on. He is then interrupted by something off screen. Suddenly, we are thrust into Planet Zeros in Universe 11. Jiren is seen fighting this massive creature there. He seems to get the upper hand, but then he too noticed something off screen. Then we are taken to Universe 6 Planet Geno. Hit is doing what he does, assassinating people. However, he too notices something. Once again, we change planets to the planet Sadala. Khalifa is training while Kale oversees. Kaba happens upon them, but he's also dumbfounded by what's in the sky. Finally, the reveal in the sky is a ball. It doesn't appear too strange. However, it does say, everyone, listen to me. We then see the multiple universes and planets in a snapshot as a speaker reveals themselves to be the Grand Priest. The Grand Priest explains that in two years time, a massive multiverse battle will take place. The reason for this? The angels and gods of destruction will only be frozen for a period of two years. The Grand Priest also goes on further stating that every individual must be ready and choose a side. Khalifa is seemingly shocked by this. Meanwhile, at the picnic on planet Earth, Krillin is visibly shaken up. Goten asks Vegeta, Dad isn't with you? To this, Vegeta is seemingly puzzled, assuming that the Saiyan is already on Earth. The chapter ends with a weeping Chi Chi, a determined looking Goten, and a final shot of Goku still chained up. Now, we will be going over chapter 3 of this amazing fan made manga, Dragon Ball Kagume. The chapter begins with Vegeta and Bulma discussing what was revealed previously that they only have two years to train for an all-out multi-universal battle. Vegeta comments that they must find Broly and that he'll send Trunks, Gohan, and Goten to see Whis. Meanwhile, Piccolo is preparing himself for what is to come. Though he is interrupted by a mysterious presence, the perspective then switches back to Vegeta and Bulma as Bulma yells at Jocko. Vegeta goes outside to escape the yelling and strikes up a conversation with Gohan. Vegeta asks him what does he plan on doing. Gohan himself confirms that he'll study and train. Seeing his opportunity, Vegeta suggests that Gohan trains with Whis. To further encourage Gohan, Vegeta also mentions Goku is already training with Whis. But as we already know, this is far from the truth as we can get. Unfortunately, Gohan rejects his offer. He then says that Goku told him about the hyperbolic time chamber for Trunks and Goten. Vegeta also asks Gohan to go see Krillin, Yamcha, and Tien. He travels to Krillin's home first. He asks Krillin if he's seen Yamcha or Tien. Krillin says that they're inside, and then Gohan tells Krillin he knows the type of training Krillin will be doing. Man, I gotta take a minute to say that I will never get over how close this fan-made manga replicates the official art. Makes me really think I'm reading something from Jump, which makes reviewing such a treat. Anyway, Gohan learns from Vegeta who is accompanied by Trunks and Goten that Goku was frozen in Universe Zero as well. We then see the shock expressions of Android 18, Krillin, and Gohan. Not only this, but we also see the surprise color of Goten and Trunks' face. The perspective again switches back to Piccolo. He was interrupted by none other than Soyonil and Pelina. They tell Piccolo that they should join forces. To this, Piccolo takes off his hat and says, Alright, but before that, I have to go and do something. His expression is nothing less than determined. Truthfully, it felt like a bit of a twist for me to see Piccolo agreeing to team with Sonil and Polina. While this happens on planet Vampa, we see Bulma brought a rather large ship presumably for everyone to fit. Chilai asks what is the meaning for, and Bulma confirms the fact there's going to be an intergalactic battle. Then Bulma receives word from Whis about Goku. Back at Krillin's home, Gohan tells the group, which includes Tien and Yamcha, that they each have a role to play and he knows the perfect training. Krillin still seems hesitant as he explained that he couldn't do anything during the Tournament of Power, 
why would this be different? Master Roshi also agrees, saying that he's been training for 350 years and with that amount of time, Master Roshi believes that he can't progress any further. I wasn't expecting to see Master Roshi, but growing up, he was my favorite character. Krillin then further affirms his stance, stating he belongs at home with Android 18 and their child. With a serious expression, Gohan then explains that his father has been protecting others and giving his life for them. Not only this, but there are countless people who need their help. Krillin appears to be shaken by this speech. However, both Tien and Yamcha agrees to train. Android 18 suddenly stands up and speaks to Krillin alone. She tells him that she'll support whatever he does. If he fights, she will too. Android 18 also says that this battle is bigger than both of them. Clearly, Krillin will have a big decision to make. Meanwhile, Trunks and Vegeta say their goodbyes to Bra. It's not often we see the more gentle side of Vegeta, but it's really refreshing. That being said, the two pass Bra onto Bulma's father. Then we see Vegeta pass into Whis's cube. Alongside him, we see Gohan, Master Roshi, Tien, Yamcha, and surprisingly Krillin. The group meets with Whis, and Gohan informs the group that Krillin, Yamcha, and Tien will go to Universe 9. They are to see a group known as the Trio of Dangers. Yamcha is unimpressed by them, while Tien tells him not to be so assured. The group then leaves to start their two years of training. Pivoting back to Planet Vampa, we see Bulma's group head for Planet Sadala, which is in Universe 6. She like questions the universe hopping, but then silenced by the speed they travel. The force is enough for those on board to be thrown back. Meanwhile, Gohan's group arrives at Planet Salamin in Universe 9. A dense cloud covers the planet, which we say is half the radius of the planet's center. Its size causes Krillin to panic as the group must go on through it. To his luck, a hole opens up in the clouds for Yamcha, Krillin, and Tien to go in through. On Planet Sadala, we see that Vegeta has arrived. Obviously, the Saiyans there pick a fight with him, which is something Vegeta sees as a piece of cake. While Vegeta fights off the populace, Goten and Trunks arrives at Beerus' planet. Both Trunks and Goten are amazed by Beerus having his own planet despite it being so small. Beerus tells the group to leave, but Goten interrupts him saying that his dad may be dead by now. They need to train. The God of Destruction tells Goten to watch his tone, saying that the coming war is more important than Goku. In rage, Goten charges at him. I must admit, I'm not crazy about action scenes in general, but action panels are so fluid I can't help but enjoy them. Trunks steps in to stop Goten, however Beerus grabs Goten and throws him. Beerus then reaffirms that he won't have Trunks and Goten on his planet. While this happens, in Universe 9 on Planet Salamint, we see that Krillin, Yamcha, and Tien are being ignored. Krillin comes to the occlusion that people there don't speak their language but is puzzled as Bergamo, Lavenda, and Basil understood them. Speaking of this trio, they are seen wondering if Krillin, Yamcha, and Tien are for the blame for the hole in the sky. Back to Vegeta as he is seen standing in front of a pile of people he defeated. A voice wanders who piles up their buddies. Then it is revealed the voice belongs to none other than Kalifla, who wonders why Vegeta is on Planet Sandala. Meanwhile, on Bulma's ship, the group finally arrives in Universe 6. The group is clearly shaken up by the multi-universe travel, but then head to Planet Sandala. Then, there's a flashback in Universe 11. Makarita, Belmov's angel, states that Belmov's immortality will last only as long as his reign does.
Belmoth himself isn't too terribly concerned by this as he says that he has lived for a very long time for his species. Gathered with him are Topo, Dispo, and Jiren. To them, Belmo says that they are strong fighters and he respects them for that. Topo then affirms that he is ready. And we see Belmo's powers of destruction pass on to Topo. Topo is seen as strong and intense as ever. Meanwhile, Belmoth is nothing but a corpse. Margarita asks Topo how he feels, and Topo responds he feels good, however, he suddenly realizes that Belmoth is dead. He mourns his friend, but is quickly altered to Gohan's presence. Then the chapter ends with Gohan saying, I'm not sure I understand everything, but time is running out. I think you have a lot to offer me. So with that, we see Gohan's training destination was Universe 11. I will say this was another dialogue heavy chapter, but the art style is so nostalgic for me. That being said, I'm really pumped for the next chapter. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps the channel as we plan to venture into content beyond Dragon Ball. Once again, I'm your host, Vro, and we'll catch you for Chapter 4's review.